Okay, what's up everybody? It's Mitch here with Century 21 and the Kamara Cleary team in Peterborough. We are coming at you again with another episode of the Small Town Housing Show. And I'm going to say it one more time before we change the name on the podcast app that I think we are going to change the name of the show to the PTBO Housing Show, just when you go to search for it. Anybody who's already following, it should just switch over for you. But if you're new to the YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. If you are watching this video and you just want to listen, we are on all the major podcast apps. And for anybody out there who's been enjoying this, um, if, if you could do me one small favor and share it with a friend or two, that would be incredible. Uh, it's been great to continue to, to grow this and chat with people. Uh, in our community about what's going on and really just want to keep the conversation growing. So um, let's get into this week's video. This is going to be a bit of a quicker one. Um, just going to keep this one brief. We went over some of the stats last week, went in depth on on the Peterborough being the most overvalued market in Canada, as some articles had it labeled. And this week was supposed to be an interview with Stephen Wright, who is the North Ward uh, counselor for Peterborough, who is going to be running for the mayor position uh, this fall, but we had to bump that. Me and Stephen had to bump the interview to later this week. So it's going to be next week. So let's just do a little market check in here. We're going to run through what happened the last seven days at Peterborough, talk about some of the inventory changes, um, glance over some macro stuff, and then talk about where do we go from here. So uh, the seven day review 108 new listings. 59 firm sales. That means a net of 49 new listings. This is when I log on to our system, uh, Matrix, you know, in our PCAR, uh, Peter Brook Corthor Association of Realtors, uh, basically database, our hub. Uh, 49 new listings in the last seven days, net new uh, when we subtract sales. This is up there with the strongest week over week numbers all year. So here we are in the middle of May and still grabbing steam. Um, inventory at the end of April was closer to one month of inventory. So still extremely low, but nonetheless on the rise and, and, and on the rise in significant manner. You know, we went from a half a month of inventory almost up to one month. There's no different when you go to think of this. It's a, it's a doubling of inventory. It's still historically extremely low, but it's like going from half half a percentage point on your interest rate up to 1%. It's a doubling. Um, so 14 price changes this past week as well, uh, which can, the price shuffle continues. The, the list low and holds that don't get offers continue to have to reposition after one week. And then once they come on, if they, if they come on too high, another week later, the price reducing. So people are all over trying to rescatter and readjust where is the new normal in this market? Because at this point, it's on the move. There's no baseline. There's scattershot sales in all different price categories. And arguably, in my opinion, it's, it's all on the, on the way down. Um, so let's talk about offers. The amount of offers on properties is definitely dropping. And in most cases, they're not nearly as serious as they were. So uh, our showing activity is down. Our offer counts down. Normally, the showings is always a reflection of how many, uh, or the offers are normally a reflection. In some way, it's a function of how many showings you got. The showings are down. The offers are not coming in the same. And at, at certain points when the market was on the rise, sometimes it only took two, three offers to drive something to where you needed to be because the mentality was that there was still such a scarcity mentality that two people, three people would pit against each other and still drive it to, to heights that were, um, you know, new, new records or, or, or matching current prices. Uh, but now when you're seeing one, two, three offers, uh, first of all, that's all you're seeing. In most cases, you're not seeing four, five, six offers and the type of double digits that really drive things nuts. Um, even in sought after locations and really turnkey stuff, seeing lower offer counts and, and everyone's playing the game. People are lowballing. Um, even in cases, sometimes when you're seeing these cancel relist properties, these are properties that got two, sometimes even three plus offers on offer night, but none of them came with the seller's expectation. And we're still seeing a lot of sellers that are expecting uh, January prices. Having to have this talk with a lot of people right now, um, it, it, the people saying, well, I'm not taking that when the one down the road sold a month and a half ago for, for price X. And it's kind of like, well, hey, everybody wants to go back and buy Amazon stock when it was five bucks a share, uh, but you can't. So you can you can call your stockbroker all you want, or you can go on on a Quest Trade and say, 
I'm not buying Amazon at, I don't even know what the price per share is, is these days, you know, but, but it doesn't matter. You can't go on and say, no, I want it. I want it back at, at five bucks. And, and cause that ship has sailed. So the, the price is at the peak. They were an enigma and they are gone uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. And so I think that things are changing rapidly and it pays more to be a realist because if things are on the way down, you can either choose to claw and fight to get last month's prices or you can accept this month's prices before you're still sitting around on the market another month trying to chase uh, this month's prices and wishing that you had gotten them. So it's, it's all about being a realist right now and, and instead of trying to maximize. The maximize in this case is, is to get what you can right now. Uh, now, some people will argue that like, hey, it's a bad time to list, take your listing off the market. Um, you can really go deep on this topic about where do we go from here? Where do the price changes move to? Do we continue to decline? Do we see another 10, 15% drop? Uh, month over month or does things sort of plateau here or sellers start to get a bad taste in their mouth and say this is just not a great time to list the housing crisis the supply de demand fundamentals still aren't in check I think this is all going to come around in the long run um, that that's yet to be seen but I mean if Toronto's any kind of indicator we still got some some ground uh, to fall underneath us here I think so uh, that's just my own personal opinion consult obviously with you know if you're, if you're using a different agent consult with your own agent everybody's entitled to their own opinion in this stuff. Uh, I would just say, you know, try and ha have some logic behind why you think, if, if, if you think it's going to stop soon, dropping, ask yourself why, how, try and support and back that up. Um, if you think it's going to keep dropping, how far do you think it's going to go? Uh, you know, make sure it's not a fear-based opinion. Sort of take it all in. Look at how much the interest rates are set to continue to rise. How much is that going to change people's uh, ability to leverage themselves? What's going to happen with incomes? Look at what's going on in the stark stock market. You know, period stretch, uh, I believe is the worst four consecutive weeks drop uh, th that we've seen since. It was something like 2004. Um, so the stock market's on the slide. Recessionary winds are, are blowing here. Um, and I, I think that Honestly, my own opinion is it feels like things might might start to get a little bit ugly here. Um, so so let's talk about buyers in this market. It's it's interesting because I think where prices are going to go depends on what product class you're talking about. Arguably, the top ends gets gets hit first and hardest, and the stuff that's in the middle bracket is probably going to hold its ground the most. Um, you know, not not the least reasons of which is is because we're already starting to see at some of these numbers, uh, some of the, you know some of the stuff that's down almost 100k, 7500k uh, from the peaks at the end of February, start of March, um, in in these you know little brick bungalow uh, category. Some of the stuff's already getting back into cash flow territory, and I mean when there's cash flow there you know, yeah, you got to factor in some higher numbers if you're going variable and everybody's going variable right now. So if you're taking something at, at 2.7, you got to make sure it's still going to cash flow for you at, at these rents at, you know, three and a half percent. Um, but it, we're getting there. These things are looking, starting to cash flow. I'm running numbers on things at 3% interest. And I'm, I'm drawing examples of single families that if they're split into two units, um, they, they're going to cash flow. So if you build in that bit of overhead on the variable rates, uh, there's, there's already starting to be opportunities out there. So I think that that's going to put a bit of pressure on the, uh, or, or, or a bit of a floor on, you know, select product within that, uh, middle, you know, 500 to 650 range. Um, because even though end users might be sitting back thinking, Hey, I'm in no rush. I want to watch this thing go to the bottom. Um, I mean, a lot of investors are just happy to lock in cash flow because in a lot of cases, cash flow uh, for the mom and pop investor has been gone for the last year and a half. Um, so, so, and, and bearing in mind for everybody out there, if you're analyzing these things, it goes without saying, um, rents are probably due to rise as all these buyers sit on the sidelines because the, the supply isn't increasing in an absolute sense versus our immigration so i think as as long as people sit on the sidelines the more pressure compiles on the rental side of the equation uh, but you can't realize those rental gains um as a long-term landlord in 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 this uh you know, province. So, uh, you know, if interest rates rise, your costs go up and your, your income is fixed as long as you don't have any turnover in your unit. So bear that in mind, but income, income cash flow is returning. And I think that's going to, going to start to plateau a bit of the stuff in the middle 
uh, uh, of the price ranges. But what's going to happen to uh, continue up at that million dollar mark and with these large two stories, um, you know, t over over 2,500 square foot product. I, to, to me, it's hard to tell where that's going to land here as we see what's happening in, in Toronto and Oshawa. So um, I think that that's it for this week, guys. We'll wrap on that. Where and how far this thing goes in the, in the backwards direction, nobody can call it. Um, if you want to have a consult with us, if you're thinking about buying or selling and you're in the, you know, if you're, if you're within the next, uh, three months, definitely reach out and, and, and chat with us. We, we got to be coming up with a strategy right now about what your absolute needs are out of, out of your sale or your purchase and whether or not anything out there makes sense for you right now. We can have a totally honest, frank discussion, uh, bearing in mind everything that's going on out there in the market. And then it also, if you're looking at doing something in a year from now and you, you have the total flexibility, whether you could do something a year, six months, and you want to start thinking about how you're going to steer the ship. Um, also helpful to have, a, a, you know, some, some big discussions about what your needs are for the money uh, or, or the property, what your plans are with it and how much a, a swing one way or the other in the market could affect you. And then we just talk about some probabilities and scenarios. What's the most likely thing that's going to happen? How would that affect you and what's your risk tolerance on, on which way things might split here? So um, anybody who wants to set an appointment, uh, my Calendly link will be down below in this appointment box or you can just shoot us an email, get familiarized with, with the team, uh, myself, Sean, Jordan, Tamer, uh, we're having success stories still on a weekly basis right now. And we're, we're excited every time we get to meet new clients right now and, and bring them into the fold and just start having these discussions and giving some guidance. So, um, that's it for this week. Have a good week, everybody, and we'll look forward to chatting with Stephen Wright next week about uh, his, his run for mayor and his thoughts on housing in the city of Peterborough. Take care, everybody.